This is T. Corman, uh, the SCP Foundation, continuing Dr. Campbell's request. Let's see, entry 8, SCP-101, also known as the Hungry Bag. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-101, is currently stored in the sub-basement 0-2 of Site-19 inside of a standard fireproof document lockbox within a reinforced concrete room of standard facility size. Said room has been fitted externally with a standard double-door airlock and internally fitted with appropriate safety response equipment as well as biological response equipment. Only personnel of level 3 are permitted to enter SCP-101's holding room. Personnel of level 2 or lower are permitted to interact with SCP-101 only with directives from level 3 or higher personnel or with standing directives. The airlock for SCP-101 is set to a standard 10-minute cycle, during which standard screening scans for biological or environmental hazards will be made. SCP-101 is understanding directives for use during 0600 and 2000 hours. Outside of the airlock of the holding room for SCP-101, two level 2 guards are to be posted at all times with overlapping shifts. Description, SCP-101 appears as a satchel or bag of intermittent size with observations ranging from an opening of 15 centimeters in diameter to 70 centimeters in diameter. The depth of the container has varied with no standard mean of equality to the relative diameter. It's a bit strangely worded, but anyway, <laughs> no scientist. The primary feature of SCP-101 is what appears to be a semi-humanoid mouth contained within the opening of the bag, with a mean standard of 31 centimeters of depth into the container, without more than two standard deviations of variance regardless of the apparent external depth of the container. The mouth consists of 32 teeth of an off-white hue, all of equal shape and size, consisting solely of incisors and approximately 10 centimeters in length. It has been observed, albeit not measured with accuracy, that within the mouth there is a tongue of indeterminate length, with observations ranging from 50 centimeters to 3.5 meters. The mouth appears wet and spongy, however. All attempts at removal of possible fluids have resulted in failure with damage to the instruments and harm to the personnel. The current decision is that SCP-101 may be a part of a larger entity of extra-dimensional origin. SCP-101 is not externally mobile, however, internal movements within the container may affect mi or can affect minor movements of the exterior of the container that consists of SCP-101's covering. It is understood that due to the nature of the size, improbabilities of the container and object within, the object is of extra-dimensional interaction, if not origin. SCP-101 has exhibited polymorphic abilities, as well as a low level of sentience. The photo on file depicts the item as it was discovered in 1979 in a remote area of the Cascade Mountains in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Found along with SCP-101 was the decayed remains of a human clad in a weathered black suit, seated upon an also weathered parachute, missing the right arm up to the joint of the shoulder, which appeared to have bite marks through the remaining bones, assumed to have been inflicted by SCP-101. Speculation as to the identity of the deceased individual has led researchers to the conclusion that this was one D.B. Cooper, remains removed for purposes of concealing the existence of SCP-101. SCP-101 has since changed appearance and shape with the apparent end of enticing a subject into reaching within the container. These appearances have ranged from money satchels, to deli boxes, to Krispy Kreme containers, to candy bags, all of which have an external appearance that is indistinguishable from that of the real containers. It has been proposed by Dr. They remove that, that SCP-101 is semi-sentient in its attempts to lure subjects in. 
at the recommendation of data expunged, SCP-101 is currently in use as a means of refuse disposal for Site-19. <laughs> really? I mean, I'd heard about it, but I didn't think that it... Uh, anyway, SCP-101 has not shown adverse reaction to having foreign matter introduced to it, including but not limited to paper product, sewage, cafeteria refuse, metals, polymers, oils, and other products which are not consumable by any known biological entity. Addendum 1. So far, SCP-101 has not exhibited any abnormal behaviors from the standards observed, nor has SCP-101 emitted any substances, either foreign, extra-dimensional, or abnormal. However, it is in the concern of Dr. Censored, I guess, that SCP-101 may produce an emission in the future. Addendum 2. Further examination under the direction of Dr. Once again removed, has determined that SCP-101 is ideal for the disposal of hazardous waste and by and byproducts of other SCP-related projects. The doctor is noted as being opposed to this measure, however, 05-censored has given authorization for the project to continue. Well, um... <laughs> I've... I've got to say, uh, Dr. Campbell, these, the ones that you've been picking out, it, I mean, a coat, a virus, a gun that's alive, and now a interdimensional trash can? I mean, I know these are all just part of the job, but why these? I mean, what? Ne you know what? <laughs> never, never mind. Uh, never mind. Well, anyway, that was SCP-101, also known as the Hungry Bag. <laughs>